Hi and welcome to another episode from Spiral Physics Education. So in this lesson we're going to be looking at different shapes of magnetic fields, uh, how to produce those magnetic fields, um, looking at different magnetic materials, we're going to be looking at plotting magnetic fields and how to do that using two different uh, methods, and we're going to be looking at what a bar magnet magnetic field looks like, and what the uniform magnetic field line looks like and what equipment you need to produce a uniform magnetic field. So what do you need to know for this lesson? Well, really you need to know that um, forces uh, are exerted by fields and that's the most important thing. So I'll give you a quick reminder of that. Um, a field in physics isn't something with crops and cows and trees in. So you've got to get away from that idea about that, that idea of a field. So fields in physics exert forces and there are different types of fields and different types of forces. So um, objects with mass exert gravitational fields. Uh, objects with charge uh, it produce an electric field and the one that we're going to be looking at today is magnetic materials produce magnetic fields and therefore magnetic forces. So we're going to start off by looking at what type of materials um, are magnetic and affected by magnetic fields. So you may have done this experiment in the lab uh, where you've had a mixture of materials, every uh, of day materials, and you've been given a bar magnet to test which of those are, are experienced magnetic forces. So when you put them near, then you find out that uh, there's only a handful of materials that actually get attracted to the magnets. And if we looked a little bit closer at the, those types of materials, you might find that they're commonly iron, steel, nickel, and cobalt, and those are the most common materials um, around us today that, uh, that are magnetic and the most common ones that you need to know. There are others, but from the periodic table, uh, iron, nickel and cobalt uh, are the ones that you need to know. Lots of materials are not magnetic though, and some examples of those are that you'll find that copper, uh, lead, aluminium, none of those metals are aluminium, or the other metals for that matter, and certainly none of the non-metals like rubber and plastic, um, they're not going to be magnetic. So not all materials are magnetic and certainly not all metals are magnetic and stick to iron, nickel, cobalt and I guess steel uh, for examples of magnetic materials. So what about magnetic field shapes? There are two possible ways in, um, for you to know about how to produce a magnetic field shape so you can see the shape of a magnetic field. So we're going to look at the first one, which, which is probably arguably the, 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 the more fun out of the two, where you've got a um, salt and pepper shaker um, with some iron filings in there and you need a bar magnet. And what we do is we place a piece of paper over the bar magnet. Now, the reason why we do that is because the iron filings will stick to the bar magnet, otherwise it gets very messy and time consuming to remove those iron filings. And the reason why we use iron filings is number one, it's a magnetic material, so they will get, they will experience forces produced by this bar magnet. And the filings, that means they're very, very small, so they're going to move around easily and um, they're going to be ideal for uh, identifying the shape uh, of, of this bar magnet. So once we've done that, all we do is we sprinkle the iron filings um, around the shape, around the piece of paper, around the bar magnet. And what those iron filings will do eventually is they will sort of line up along the magnetic field lines, um, but they might clump together in areas. Um, so once, once you've done that for a little while, and I've only done it for a little bit here, um, you just use a finger and you gently tap onto the piece of paper. You might notice that the iron filings sort of shuffle around and there's a, there's a little bit of a clearer pattern to the magnetic field line. So in an exam, you need to be able to uh, go through that procedure to uh, identify the magnetic field lines. It's not the best though. So a second method would be using similar equipment, bar magnets and a piece of paper, pencil as well is important, but in this, this time, something called a plotting compass. And uh, you get the plotting compass and like here, you place it at one end of the bar magnet, usually in a corner to start off with. And uh, what we notice is that the plotting compass will get affected by the bar magnet and it will line up um, in the magnetic, along with the magnetic field lines. And what we do is use a pencil then to draw a dot where it's pointing, just like this. And then what we do is uh, we move the plotting compass uh, to that point and it will realign with the magnetic field. 
So here we go. Let's remove it. And it gets realigned. And you repeat, you put uh, a pencil dot where it's pointing to again, and you repeat that all the way around. Now, some of these, bar these, these magnetic field lines can all go off the paper, so that's absolutely fine. So when you finish it, uh, this, this first one, it may look like that, but know that it's gone over the paper. Um, and all we then do is uh, continue um, at another position and repeat. And you just do it as many times as you can from different places. And you always start from one pole and you'll always end up at another pole. And once you've done this, what we need to do then um, is, is to get a pencil and draw up the dots that are associated with one of those activities. In this case, this is the first one that we did. And if we complete that activity, uh, you'll get a magnetic field shape that looks like this after lots and lots of repeats. Um, so that's a much better way because what we get is a, a better idea about the magnetic field shape around this bar magnet. And if we were to look at uh, a better image of it, then we're not that far off. It looks something like this. However, these ones are a little bit more detailed in that they've got arrows on them. So the thing to realise is that where fields are close together, that signifies uh, a larger force. So where magnetic field lines are very close together, the magnetic forces are strongest there. And we call these areas where the magnetic field lines are close together, the poles. So the poles are the strongest part of the magnets because that's where the magnetic field lines are closest together. And we call the one where the magnetic field lines come out, uh, north, and the one where the magnetic field lines go in, south. And you have to remember that magnetic field lines are drawn going from the north pole to the south pole. So the last thing is, how do we produce a uniform magnetic field? Now, if you remember back to uh, electric fields, electric field lines um, are uniform, and we draw them uniformly um, by drawing them evenly spaced and parallel. So how do you get evenly spaced and parallel magnetic field lines? Well, you need two bar magnets to start off with, and you need to have opposing poles. So here we've got two bar, um, bar magnets, I get my words out and the poles are opposing, so red is north and blue is south. And once they're facing each other, the field lines in between are drawn like this. So uniform, so they're evenly spaced and they're parallel. And all we need to do then is add in the arrows to show the direction of the magnetic field. Remember they go from north to south, north being red, south being blue, so they go in this direction. So that's one way of producing a uniform magnetic field. Another way, still using two bar magnets and still uh, having opposing poles facing each other, but having them parallel to each other this way, you get two areas where there are opposing poles. So this is one area where there's an opposing pole, and here's another area where there's an opposing pole, and we've got to remember to draw the arrows in to represent the direction of the field lines. So it goes from north to south, red to blue in this case. So there we've got our uniform magnetic field lines. So I hope you found that useful, and uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and uh, there'll be more videos about magnetic fields coming soon.